Among Russian evangelicals, Baptists are the most interesting Christian church. Many Baptists around the world would find commonalities, recognize the songs, sermon topics and traditions, yet long decades spent behind the Iron Curtain and the specific social context in which Baptists emerged made them a very Russian phenomenon. Sociologists would call them a global group, meaning that they have both globally recognized and specific local features at the same time. As I have said before, Russian evangelicals emerged in the 1860s. Before that, most Protestants were of a foreign origin and belonged to diasporas. Evangelicals, however, were predominantly converted from the local population and for that they faced their first persecutions, because before 1905 it was a crime to convert an Orthodox Christian to any other faith. Russian Baptists have their roots in Germany, the Netherlands and England. Congregations and individual missionaries of that background insisted on the meticulous study of the Bible and individual conversion of every believer. Another important Christian movement that significantly impacted Russian Baptists were sectarian groups declared heretics by the Orthodox Church and exiled mostly to the south of Russia. Those were Molokanya, Hlisty, Duhabori and others. Their views were quite similar to evangelicals, they rejected clergy as mediators between man and God, complex hierarchical liturgy of the Orthodox Church, and insisted on literal reading of the scripture. Although many communities are still around to this day, many of them converted to the Baptist faith as well as Pentecostal and Adventist. Russian evangelicals formed three main groups. Although throughout history there were splits and unions within these groups, theologically we can still divide them into Baptists, Pentecostals and Seventh-day Adventists. They all share the fundamental evangelical principles such as biblical literalism, individual born-again conversion and salvation by faith alone. However, they emphasize different aspects in their theologies up to the point of irreconcilable differences. For instance, Pentecostals insist on the visible works of the Holy Spirit, such as speaking in tongues, prophecy and healing. Adventists stress the imminent coming of the end times and certain commandments of the Mosaic Law. When it comes to Baptists, they are the most tech-centered of them all. Everything they believe should be justified with scripture, and although they do see the acts of God in the everyday life, the life and hope of a Christian, they believe, should be focused on the Bible alone. Up until the middle of the 20th century, there was another evangelical group quite similar and theologically close to Baptists. They were called the Church of Evangelical Christians. After the bloody repressions of the 1930s, most religious leadership throughout the country was destroyed. However, in 1943, Stalin's government launched religious liberalization, most likely as ideological support during the raging war. Evangelicals were allowed to register only one union, and Baptists and Evangelical Christians quite promptly negotiated their minor theological differences and formed the union. Since then, the official name of the Baptist Church in Russia is the Church of Evangelical Christians hyphen Baptists, yet for brevity they are still mostly called Baptists. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, some communities split peacefully and re-established the Church of Evangelical Christians, but these were the minority. Up to this day, most believers and their leaders do not distinguish between those two and consider themselves as one church. The much more painful and significant split of the Baptist community occurred in 1961. After the death of Stalin in 1953, Nikita Khrushchev took over. Although in most social and political spheres he was seen as a great liberator and reformer who relieved the country of bloody terror, his policies towards religion remained hostile. He saw religion as an ideological enemy of communism and launched an anti-religious campaign. Among other things, the already existing legislation on religions was enforced. It prohibited religious education for children, missions and evangelism, baptism of the youth, and even the church attendance by children. Initially, churches complied, 
but a significant part of the community considered these prohibitions unacceptable for a Christian church. After some turmoil, a number of communities split from the church and formed an alternative union, the Council of Churches of Evangelical Christian Baptists. This union was not recognized by the state and all its member churches refused to officially register not to comply with the legislation. The state immediately unfolded targeted persecutions. The underground church leaders were repeatedly imprisoned, their churches and even private houses were bulldozed to the ground if they held Sunday services, Christian parents lost custody over their children, believers were largely discriminated in education and employment. In turn, underground Baptists unfolded an unprecedented dissident campaign. They petitioned state leaders for the imprisoned brothers and sisters and the conditions of believers in the country, organized smuggling of Bibles and religious literature from abroad, and letters documenting the situation back to their foreign allies, organized a network of underground printeries, the committee of the wives and mothers of prisoners provided families of the incarcerated with shelter, food and school supplies. Even the political dissidents of those times acknowledged the organization and perseverance of Baptists. Shortly before the collapse of the Soviet Union, the persecutions ended and most evangelicals, especially Pentecostals and underground Baptists, actively engaged in ministries to the distant areas. See my recent video about their missions. Nowadays, there is little to no fellowship and contact between the two Baptist communities. The leadership of the registered union expressed very ambiguous position on the war in Ukraine, while the unregistered leaders mostly expressed pro-Russian sentiments. The registered church complies with the legislation and expresses loyalty to the regime in order to keep their position as one of the churches authorized by the state. This is especially evident in the context of the recent criminal charges against two former leaders who vocally opposed the war. As for the unregistered, despite their pro-Russian position in the war, they expect a new wave of persecutions as an underground anti-establishment church. Several of their congregations have been raided by the police and the comply or goodbye policy of the Russian state when it comes to religious communities echoes that of the Soviet Union. Again, just like in any other big religious community, common believers do not necessarily share political opinions and interests of their leadership. Most of them have too many everyday issues to even consider politics, and as a big number of Russians, they have family and friends on both sides. Please like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. I see you all next time.